I'd like to talk about the consequences of standing up for yourself. When I was in middle school, there was a bully who was harassing the entire school. Um, he would break into people's lockers, steal anything he could, um, and then he would physically assault and bully people in the locker rooms and outside of school and just was a really bad person. Um, and I had just moved to that school area. I think it was maybe my first or second year uh, having been in that area, uh, moving from another township. So I didn't know anybody and the handful of friends that I did make, um, you know, never explained or told me about this individual. And it just became apparent over, over my time there. Uh, eventually he tried to bully me and this happened when I was in the gym locker room uh, when we were changing and he sat next to me and started elbowing me um, in my rib uh, belly area uh, he was like sitting directly adjacent uh, to me and <clears throat> um, he did it one or two times uh, before I took a pen out of my either backpack or pocket or whatever, and I, I warned him. I said, if you hit me one more time, I'm going to stab you with this pen. And he looked around and laughed and was like, oh, yeah, you're just bluffing. And so he elbowed me one more time. And so I pulled my hand back and went as hard as I could. And really, I didn't stab him. It's not like it punctured his skin. I really just kind of hit him with my fist and I was also just holding a pen in my hand. Um, and it became a big deal. Um, everybody who had, all the other children in the locker room had seen the interaction and thought that I had stabbed him and he, reacted in a way that was as if he had been stabbed um I do remember I think he lifted up his shirt and there was just like a little red dot like I don't even think blood had came out it was just like a red spot <laughs> um but ultimately uh that happened I forget what day of the week this was but let's just say it was a Wednesday uh, by Friday, um, or in, in the days before that, I actually was carrying like a, protract, a protractor around with the pointy tip because I thought he was going to try and attack me and I would have to use it to defend myself. Luckily, that did not happen. But uh, ultimately, it did get the attention of the principal or um, school people uh, and we were brought into the principal's office. There, I had explained that he was bullying me, uh, that he bullied the entire school, has been a menace, stealing uh, Game Boys, Pokemon cards, you know, whatever kids were had of value back then. And uh, they acknowledged that, and they actually expelled him. But they also acknowledged that they had a zero tolerance violence policy that I had violated by defending myself. Um, they said that by hitting him with or without the pen or just hitting him at all and it being like acknowledged, uh, they said they had no choice but to punish me. And I was suspended for several weeks or maybe even till the end of the school year. Um, after that, um, or before I get to that, uh, you know, it's, it's upsetting that my parents or other people couldn't stand up for me and explain that I only did that to protect myself. I'm not a violent person. I don't attack people. I don't hit people. But that when you're being assaulted and the only way to prevent it is to hit back, 
I don't understand how they can enforce a zero tolerance for that uh, or how that even could be considered a violent or action um, when it's used in such a defensive way. Either way, they did not, and they portrayed me as some sort of um, bad person who used force, and uh, I immediately after that was assigned a um, IEP, like Individual Education Program. They usually assign them for children that have learning disabilities or other mental health uh, issues. And uh, ultimately the result though was I was forced to go to an alternative school, uh, an, an alternative elementary school because the way it set up was their, their version of the alternative school went up until the end of middle school, uh, but they called the entire school was an elementary school. Either way, uh, I went from going to my local middle school to uh, having to take the short bus uh, to an alternative school. And I had to do that for half of a year uh, where for the first half of the year, I was at that school full time. And during that time, um, you know, all my classes were there um, and my classmates um, all had significantly worse issues than me. Uh, maybe I can talk about that experience some other time. But ultimately, after six months, they saw that I wasn't supposed to really be there. And they started uh, incorporating me back into regular public school uh, where I would spend the first half of the day at the alternative school and then the second half of the day they would shuttle me back to the middle school um, and that didn't help being the new kid uh, going from I actually w was considered a hero um, people in the hallways before I was suspended for the rest of the year um, came up to me thanked me um, for my courage, for standing up to that bully, uh, to getting him expelled, removed from the school. And I was revered as just like a hero at first. That was until they started seeing me show up on the short bus um, at the middle of the day. And I didn't have many friends or people didn't really know me, so that didn't really go too well. Uh, and I went from being a hero who saved the school from this bully to, oh, that's the crazy kid who uh, stabbed that other kid. It's basically what it got boiled down to. And um, by the end of middle school, I was actually back to public school full time. <clears throat> At which point, um, my freshman year of high school, um, I was I was back full-time in high school. Uh, however, they did force me to keep the IEP program going and I had to go to study halls and other things despite being in advanced mathematics and other classes uh, at that time. Um, I'm going to share some other stories later, but I just want to talk about how there seems to be a trend that when you stand up for yourself, when you do what you know is right, and there's a system and rules in place to punish the people who do right, um, the consequences can be very severe. Um, you know, looking back, I don't know if I would have defended myself. Um, you know, it's hard to say exactly butterfly effect how things would go, but. Um, you know, it wasn't worth the isolation and um, ostracization that I uh, went through because of because of that. Um, later on in my life, uh, I stood up for myself for a few other different reasons, and um, 
famously, um, I stood up for my dog. This is this is my dog Liberty here, and um, she is my best friend. And in 2019, uh, there was a tenant that was renting a room from a place I was staying at that was um, taking her for walks without my permission. He would take her to a park and then let her off the leash and run around. And this individual doing this was late 50s and not in good shape. So he couldn't run or catch her or do anything. Um, and I didn't even know this was happening uh, for a long time. Um, I also found out that he was feeding her without my permission. Specifically, he would give her like pizza, pizza crust, all sorts of human food. And I had explained to him that yeah, it's not your dog. I need you to not take her out or do anything or feed her or do anything with her without my explicit permission. And he, um, he basically attacked me. He, he raised his fist up at me and said, do you want to go? And, um, basically tried to assault me, uh, at which point I got a restraining order against him because I wasn't comfortable with him being in the house, making threats against me and putting my dog's life at risk, um, by you know, keeping her off leash and um, giving her food that's not for dogs. Um, and, you know, it's easy to say, oh, I can fix that or solve this or if this happens, you know, but you can't bring a pet back to life. If she were to choke or die, like, yeah, maybe I could sue him or win or whatever, but I, I, there's no amount of money that would be worth my dog's life um and so i did what i had to do in terms of getting a restraining order i i didn't feel safe i didn't feel my dog was safe and i thought i was justified i stood up for myself again um the landlord though told me that i wasn't allowed to get restraining orders i wasn't allowed to use the law or go above him or anything and that if by affecting his money coming in. Um, now I was a problem because his tenant wasn't allowed in the property at the same property as me anymore, which again, that's a result of his actions. And I didn't do anything illegal or wrong. I went, called the police, explained what happened, went down to the station and got approved for a restraining order. This was a very real threat and incident that happened that got approved by a judge. Like these aren't just things that a random person can just pull out of a hat. Um, but my landlord ultimately punished me for what I consider standing up for myself again. Uh, he performed an illegal eviction, um, got me out of the property, changed all the locks on the doors, and refused to let me in. It took a little over a year of going to restraining order courts and going to um, various uh, civil lawsuits and proceedings to try and get access to my property. And even my dog, the landlord had even stolen my dog after locking me out and refused to give me access to it, which was like the whole point was I was trying to <laughs> protect my dog. Um, but ultimately, I, I guess the point I'm just trying to make right now is there are right things that we need to do in life and there are consequences for doing the right thing um, I'm not trying to discourage people from doing that I just wanted to let people be aware that you know um, well historically people associate you know you do something bad there would be a consequence but it works the same thing. You do something good, there's a consequence. There's sometimes unforeseen consequences for just about everything in our life. But I feel like the ones that I pay the biggest price for that set me back the most and hurt me the most are situations where I stand up for myself, 
or the people or things that I care about. So I just want to give people a warning and share my story that yeah, even if you do what's right or what needs to be done, um, sometimes you pay a heavy price.